What's up everybody, it's Coach Donnie again with ElevateYourself.org. I started working on my bench press again in conjunction with my jump training. And for those of you who don't know, I started doing my jump training again four or five weeks ago. And I decided to incorporate the bench press in my upper body lifts. One approach that's worked for me as well as the clients that I've trained to improve the bench press is to focus on doing exercises that are not the bench press to improve your bench press. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but sometimes we get so caught up in doing the same thing over and over again, just only benching to improve the bench, and that will work to a certain point if you're just starting out. Eventually, there's going to be a weak link in the movement, and that's what you're going to be, have to work on. So there are a couple ways you can improve the movement. You can either work on improving the mechanics, the speed of the lift, or building up the supporting muscle groups and finding that weak link in the kinetic chain. So this workout is one of the two different types of bench press workouts that I do to help improve my bench press. So why don't you give it a shot and let me know in the comments below if it's helped you improve your bench press. I start my bench press warm up usually with the bar. Then I work towards 135 pounds times 10 reps and then 155 pounds for 8 reps and then 185 pounds for 3 reps. And once I get close to my 70% of my one rep max, then I'll start to work towards heavy singles to practice my uh, max lifting technique and also to conserve energy. You don't want to exhaust yourself in the warm up, especially when you're performing max effort exercises. Uh, you want to save a little bit in the tank for some heavy lifts. I'm also resting about two to three minutes in between each set to make sure that I'm fully recovered. Even if you physically feel recovered, you want to make sure that your nervous system has enough time to recover. So I'm getting close to my one rep max and I'm really focusing on my breathing to inhale in and exhale out as I'm pressing the bar up. So 255 felt pretty good. Uh, the pace of the bar was pretty even, no, no pausing points. So I decided to go up to 265 and it doesn't look like I was able to make the lockout. Probably should have used a spotter, maybe gone up to 260 instead of 265. It's nice to be able to deadlift a decent weight because they can easily re-rack the bar. Now that I'm about to finish my uh, max bench exercise, I try to end on a lighter weight to make sure that I can end on a good note where I'm hitting a lift with some good speed. So I did 225 times 2. Next exercise is the incline dumbbell bench press. I start off with a lighter weight and a higher rep range and slowly work my way up to a medium heavy weight. For me, it's about 70 pound dumbbells for 10 reps. And I'm not really working toward failure, maybe one set if I really feel fresh the day and I'm trying to push myself. But just trying to hit that target weight where I'm struggling on the last two reps. So I'll do about three to four sets of the 70 pound dumbbell weight, which I consider my working set weight. Just trying to focus on stimulating um, my front deltoid, keeping my my back tight as I try to contract my chest. Next exercise is the lat pull down. Notice that the rep range is slightly higher which means the weight I'm using needs to be slightly lower and just trying to work toward that rep range to build more muscle, stimulate some hypertrophy and I will include some heavy sets later but I'm still not working toward failure. And also this is my third compound movement um, of this session, so my muscles are already sufficiently fatigued. So I want to make sure that I work through a full range of motion, still have the energy to contract all the right muscles. So that's why I need to work within uh, this lighter medium, or what I consider medium lightweight, um, for the first couple sets. And then later I'll work towards some of the, the heavier weights where I'll just do a couple reps just to squeeze out every muscle fiber. My last two sets is where I start to increase the weight and decrease the, the number of reps. Now even though the weight's heavier, I still try to keep up the speed of the pool and try to consciously contract everything at once. And especially at the bottom, try to touch my shoulder blades together or try to touch my elbows together uh, behind me to trick my body into contracting the right muscles.
The last exercise for this bench session is the tricep extension. I try to keep the weight pretty light and the rep range high, just like the lat pull down for my first set. And work through the full range of motion, constantly contracting all three heads of my tricep at the bottom. I prefer to use the bar instead of a rope or a triangle for my tricep extension because I feel like it helps mimic uh, the extension better of an actual bench press. So I try to make, I try to make this movement a little bit more uh, specific to my goal, which is increasing my bench press. Now I'm starting to increase the weight for my second and third sets. And I, I truly believe that it's important to work through all types of rep ranges regardless of what your goal is. Sometimes you might focus more on lighter weight with higher reps, other times more heavy uh, weights with lighter, uh, lower reps. And it's important to always mix them both. You might emphasize one more than the other because you want to develop strength and muscular endurance and I th it helps you build a better quality muscle. It's easy to get stuck in one rep range and lifting heavy all the time and that's an easy way to lead to injury and also higher rep ranges will actually help your max lifts. You want to make sure you develop um, all the smaller muscles around the major muscle groups and that is partially developed through the higher rep ranges. So stay tuned for the second part of this video where I'll talk about what I do on the second bench press day. Mm -hmm.